Hey there, this is Angela with the ADS Agency here to bring you the very best in marketing and branding tips as well as business tips for those of you who are entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, and personal branders. And today I've got a little bit of a different topic for you. We're really talking about the digital age and family history. And I'm really upset because I have a family reunion coming up. And for the first time, I've been asked to kind of help with the planning of it and how do we organize it differently and I think that's because during the pandemic we did a family reunion virtually and I was the one who helped pull that together because I was like the one grown adult who was very adept at using Zoom. <laughs> so, And so marketing is in all aspects of our life. There's a different way to use it depending on the different applications. So in this case we're looking at how to pass along family history in a digital age what does that look like really honestly i could tell you right now and i'm going to give you a couple of tools in this video by the way so especially a really new fun platform i like that i think you're going to find very interesting and easy to use so i'll tell you about that so be sure to stick in through the end for all of this all right let's talk about how to pass along family history in a digital age this episode is sponsored by forevery Forever, where you can discover a brand new revolutionary way to remember your loved ones. Visit now at forevery.com. I'm going to give you a little background on this. So the reason why I got into all of this anyway is because I just hit 40 not so long ago. I know you can hardly believe it, but <laughs> I totally did. And I think it's something about hitting that midlife stage. Not that I went through a crisis, but I think there's something about that that made me think, man, my parents are getting older. My dad just turned 70. My mom is in her mid sixties. All my aunts and uncles are getting older. My grandma's still hanging in there. She's in her mid nineties. Unbelievably, it's um, insane. And we're so glad to have her with us. And so, but you, you start to get that sense that, man, the people who raised us are getting older and who's got all that history and knowledge, it's that older generation. And what happens when something happens to them, eventually they won't be with us and we're gonna need to have that information to pass along or else we lose it. And there's no excuse for losing information in this day. I mean, we've got every resource available to us to have robust family histories. We can get into all that at some point. This channel is all about family history, but it is about digital tools to help you and especially help you in your everyday life as well. So I think this fits. So talking about a digital age, I really got into genealogy for this reason. I really wanted to take ownership over my own family history. A lot of times we went to family reunions. We've got two sides of the family on my dad's side. My mom's side is very small, so they don't really do reunions, but my dad's side's huge and so one side I'll do it every two years and then the next year another side does it every two years so there's always a reunion to go to every year. <laughs> a lot of times it's in Alabama and other times it's in other parts of the country, California, Mississippi, well not Mississippi, Minnesota, the other M state. <laughs> so the point about family reunions in a digital age is there's no excuse not to have the most genealogy digitalized as possible as we can because we just have too many resources available to us. So one resource I started using is MyHeritage and there's a lot of sites like this that you could use but MyHeritage is kind of like that family tree organizer, digital organizer for your family tree and so you can upload stuff and what's even better about it is through DNA you can then connect up your DNA it'll show you all these matches with all these people you don't even know some of them I've actually reached out to that's a whole other story for another day uh, but it's quite intriguing what's even more interesting about that is if you have Caucasian ancestral roots somewhere in your DNA and your family history for various reasons <laughs> which you can imagine the Caucasian lines go back a long way I mean to the beginning of records, really. You could go back and see kings and queens and European people all in your line way back to the 1300s and before. It is insane. Like even 10,000, I mean, I think I gotta check this, but 1200s even and before. Crazy. Whereas on the black side of our family, you can only really go back a couple generations, like six, 
before you start getting into slave boat eras and then there's no information before that sadly you know and that's where DNA comes in so anyway I was ve I became very fascinated about genealogy I mean really spending so much of my extra free time in the genealogical world trying to understand stuff and the other side of it is just knowing your own family because we would go to these reunions every two years and you know of course there's one every other year basically every year there's an opportunity to go to a reunion on one side of the family or the other and you go there as a little kid and you know no one I mean there's just you don't know anyone and all the older people love to say don't you remember me you don't remember me you don't know my name Oh, it's so cringeworthy. It's so sad. You feel like you should know them, but why would you? You only see them every two years and one time, you know, and they only talk to the adults. You don't get to know these people. So they know your parents. They don't know you. And that's why I said we have to take personal responsibility over our families. Who's in them? You know, they start to become so massive. You really start to lose track of who's who. How are they even related? There are people in, the, in our own city, the city I live in now, Atlanta, I didn't even know were family that live here. And I've been here six years. You know? <laughs> so there's so much to know and there's so little time. And the reason why it's all important is we've got to know so that we can inform the next generations that are coming behind us so that they can pass along that knowledge and it's not lost, right? I think there's that sense of urgency of knowing your family so that that chain of knowledge is not lost along the way, right? That's kind of where I am and I feel like there's a lot of other people who clearly are in the same space. They get to that space too of where they think it's very important to know family. And so how can we be smart about genealogy and pass that along? I once had a conversation with a guy who is a famous genealogist. I'll have to put his info here for you for those of you who can visually see. And for those of you who can't, I'll put this in our blog on the adsagency.co so you can see that later who this is. So I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but he's a famous black genealogist, really knows his stuff about how to track down black history in particular, but also with other ethnicities of just information that's hard to get. It's not readily available, looking through census records and looking through all these other avenues for information on ancestral lines. And I asked him the question, I was in one of his workshops, Tony Burroughs, oh my gosh, I just remember his name, Tony Burroughs. Ah, thank you, memory. <laughs> and so I just, I went to one of his workshops in Greenville, South Carolina, maybe eight years ago. And uh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> I'll never forget I asked him the question, you know, because I was so amazed by all of his information. And, it, and I asked him the question about the digital age because the marketer in me wants to know about what's capable now that we've got all these digital tools and just being a human being now in the, 20, in the 2020s, <laughs> you know, what's possible now with all these tools available to us and what's essentially the best way to record history with our families coming up now. We've got Facebook, we've got all these pictures flowing, new babies are coming up, marriages, divorces are all happening. How do you keep track of it all in the digital age? He didn't have a great answer for that at that time. Fair enough, you know, that was probably nearly over, nearly close to a decade ago, but I'm sure he's got a great answer now. And I'm telling you that there's a couple tools I think are really great for passing along family history, genealogical information in a digital age. And so one thing that I think is great is a tool like MyHeritage with the DNA tracker and all that good stuff. And then can you save stories in there? Yes. And you can save photos in there. Yes. What's cool about another tool that I found called Forevery. And Forevery is basically a QR code that you can stick on a something like a grave site. It can also be added to, you know, the back of a funeral program. If this happened, you know, when someone passed away, it can be put in a funeral program. You get a link because QR codes are a link. So you get a link that can be shared over email and all this. So this is really great to know too, for someone who passes, how do you, this, is, this came up during the pandemic a good bit too, and people are in different states and remember back in the pandemic where you couldn't go to the hospital you couldn't attend a funeral because they were limiting who could go and it was heartbreaking for so many people i did a video about how to do a memorial video and i'll link to that as well because there were so many people in the situation who wanted to honor their loved ones and they couldn't 
because of these restrictions on you know people can't come to the funerals and people can't go to the hospitals and all these things i had a client back then who wanted to honor someone in their fraternity who was prominent a pillar in their community in their circles and everyone was just devastated that he passed away he was a doctor in the islands and very well known people were heartbroken that they couldn't honor this man by attending his funeral and so they wanted a way to do right by him and to honor his legacy and so they came up with the idea of doing a memorial video for him in that video i show you how to do that from scratch and a couple tools and things you can do now thinking about what happens when you're in multiple states even multiple countries like that and you want to honor a loved one what can you do one of the things is this really cool for everything so with forever you can make a page dedicated to your loved one it's got an area for a photo you can even have a cover photo area which is kind of cool and then you have a whole area to show like their biographical information their story uh, even media you can upload if you've got it so video documents files things like that basically you can make a very robust page for your loved one honoring them and in addition to that, a little bit kind of like you could do with a funeral home, but better than that is it's got a guest page on it so people can come and leave comments. And what's cool about that is with the little QR code you get, so you, you build this page, they send you a QR code sticker, which you can go, and I did this with my own granddad. So um, I lost my granddad back in 02 when I was a junior, a rising junior in college. Uh, and he passed then and it was he was the first person ever in my life who was close to me who passed away it was so surreal I remember to this day how very surreal it felt when my dad told me that he passed and I just, I just couldn't believe it it just didn't even feel real it felt like fake news <laughs> so to speak I know that's a bad buzzword but it does what it felt like it didn't feel real it took a while for it to sink in even to this day all of us grandkids miss our granddad and I know all of his children our aunts and uncles miss him sorely every year around his birthday and that kind of thing my aunt will post something about him and his memory or when he passed that'll come up and then you know Facebook memories just keep serving you up photos and all of that so we always get constant reminders I thought it would be so cool to make a, a memorial page for my granddad and wouldn't it be so neat to have a place where his information his story could be told and that information can live online and people can go to it whenever they want and not even just family but also he was a teacher he was a physical ed teacher the whole gym was named after him which was so amazing he was a navy man kappa guy met my grandma who was like miss alabama a &M. he always said he wanted to marry the most beautiful woman on campus and i mean how can you not lose with the woman who is the miss alabama a &M. he married ended up marrying her after she said if you want me better hurry up because i'm not waiting around is pretty much what she said and so they got married years and years ago that was 1915 when she was miss alabama a &M. and so they made it to their 50th wedding anniversary which was awesome we had a i remember that back in um that was back in my what was that high school days high school or college somewhere around there we thought that was amazing there was a, a nice big dinner for them and what was neat was that when people had arguments and things he would have them put on boxing gloves and have them go at it with boxing gloves on and with rules and regulations and all that people would box it out instead of today like we just shoot each other up that's what happens sadly but he would have them fight with honor so to speak with these boxing gloves on and rules and all of this and people remember him to this day my both my granddad and grandma were educators and so it's nothing to walk in the street little small town in alabama and people say are you top cat's kid or tc's kid and they or grandma Ann's grandkid or I say grandma Ann, Ann's grandkid. And once they know that you are, I mean, the story just start pouring in and people tell you about how they meant so much to them. They were like a parent figure for them, a father figure, a mother figure, teaching them all about life and all this. And so, you know, you just hear that over and over again. You see the impact they made and the legacy that they had to this day. So going back to Forevery, I thought it was cool because 
anyone who ever was taught by my granddad, for example, and had him as a coach, you know, when they were playing football or something, they could go back and say, well, I wonder whatever happened to that guy. What, you know, I remember him. And what if they Googled around just to see what was available? When I Google him right now, there's not a lot I can see. But now if someone were to do it, they can come across that page because all of his information is there. It's Googleable, it's search engine friendly, all of that good stuff. And so he could potentially pop up and someone could learn about him and say, oh man, that was my coach from high school. I didn't know that he also was a Navy man back then. The point is now people can search him online, students, people who are grandkids of students, parents of students, and all of that who heard about this top cat guy and find out information about him. People who had him as a line brother in his because he was Kappa guy. Maybe his line brother's kids heard about him and wanted to do some research and now that information is available online, searchable and all that good stuff and with other photos and everything. So it's just a nice resource page, dedication, honor page for that person. And it could live on forever and be passed around. If it existed in the time when he actually passed, we could have put that on the back of his funeral program. People could scan a QR code if that technology existed back then and share his story with people who didn't live in the area. So people who weren't in South Carolina, Florida, Alabama, in this area, if they were out in Minnesota, couldn't make it. If they were overseas at the time, couldn't make it, they could go to this link and read all about him even leave comments as a guest you know about a story that they had which is really cool you know so that's a cool way to collect stories if you like to do that so i showed this to my niece and nephews so they could see the story and thankfully since my sister told them all about my granddad of course they are very well aware of who my granddad is but some things they didn't know you know so it was cool for them to see that page and read about their great granddad whom they never got to meet but was so instrumental in how my sister was raised how we were raised and the values that we have it helps them learn about where we came from right so that's a really great application and a great way to pass along information about a family member and your family in a digital age using a tool like Forever. And again, I mentioned that QR code, not only is it the page, but you get a physical QR code sticker and that you can actually stick on their actual grave site. So we went to my granddad's grave site and there's like a family plot there with his father, which would be my great granddad and also my great grandmother is there, Bessie Smith very cool to go there and see where they rest next to, I used to be kind of scared I used to be very scared of cemeteries <laughs> as a child and now especially now I've got a client who's in the historical preservation space she talks a lot about cemeteries and and preserving them and and so I have such a different view now of cemeteries it seems like such a peaceful place and a place of history as opposed to a scary place like horror films have made them out to be <laughs> <laughs> and I don't watch horror films for that reason so it's a much more peaceful place for me now and a much more place of curiosity you know just to see where our loved ones are and where they rest and also even more importantly to know their stories so we went to the grave site with my parents I thought I was gonna go by myself and they were like it's too day but dad <laughs> I should have known my dad would be like this but my dad's like it's too dangerous for you to go by yourself it's really not you know, it's in a, a neighborhood. The neighborhood has changed since then, but it's it's right next to the church that they grew up in and where we did our Easter speeches in as little children. So there's my great grandparents and then it's my granddad and there's a plot for my grandmother to rest next to him whenever she happens to pass. And so we went there and my parents are often the ones to go clean up the gray site so every now and then there's no staff that cleans it and i'm pretty certain a lot of families are in the situation with their cemeteries not all of them are in this fancy place where you maybe pay a fee i don't even know how it works um for somebody else to clean and keep the cemeteries clean and cut down and mowed back and all that stuff so so every now and then they have to go out there about once a year clean off the plot. You can see my mom, she's raking it up. 
so again I wasn't expecting them to come with me I'm all dressed up trying to be respectful for my granddad and then they're like no we're coming with you <laughs> so you can see my mom in the background she's like raking up the leaves this is what she does out there raking up the pine needles and then we broke out the the soap you know scrubbed down the graves actually she had like a solution with like bleach and that kind of thing because she heard that you know you should mix it in with bleach and that's how you really get the grime off of grave headstones so she had all that together and we had the gravestone cleaned off dried off and then we put on the qr code on the back of the grave site so if you were walking up from the street which is the way you would enter into the cemetery and you were headed up towards that plot you could see that little qr code sticker on the back of the grave so it doesn't interfere from the look of the headstone from the front of the grave but you can see it from the back and you know it's there and so people can scan that code and then it takes them to that page so people who may not even know that we created this page for my granddad but they happen to see a qr code and everyone knows what to do with a qr code now you scan it and it goes to a link so people who don't even know that we did that but happen to come across it and may not even know my granddad may not even know our family per se they just came across it and we were like oh snap it's a qr code on this now. i'm gonna go see what it says it's about that person's life how cool is that how cool is that you can actually learn about who that was how many times i was just watching <laughs> it's so potentially lightly unrelated but i was just watching this day i have a fascination now with rome because of a client and same client with the historic preservation so now i'm learning watching everything about rome because she's going to be there for a half a year which is very exciting so of course what do you think about in rome you think about the Colosseum, and there is this all this information about Pompeii and all this and you know the big volcanic eruption that happened the historic how it preserved bodies in motion as the ash rained down them and all of this and they were talking about grave sites and how people were usually cremated and all this and they were trying to uncover stories about people and grave sites were a big part a big clue into how people lived and what their lives were like and they were really working hard to piece together this one particular guy who was a slave and who in that day in in the roman empire you could buy your way out of slavery so he rose from slavery bought his own freedom and became a very prominent well-known roman who was very wealthy and that is very interesting they were interested to see how he got his wealth and how he rose to the stature that he had and so that's all to say that if they had a qr code <laughs> or even now you know now having uncovered so much information how cool would it be to put a historically preservation appropriate qr code sticker that doesn't interrupt the material of the grave right but you got a qr code on the grave and now having uncovered all this cool information about this guy marcus people could go there scan that qr code and learn all about this very cool story of a guy who rose from slavery to prominence and wealth i mean who doesn't love that who doesn't love that kind of story it's amazing you can now transform your grave sites family grave sites into a place where people can learn about your family history and not just people but your own family so as family goes to the plot and learns you know just to pay their respect they can learn the story of people they may have never heard the story they may have never known them we're getting into how many generations now three generations away and more and coming how cool is that for them to learn where the family plots are and then be able to just scan and read a story so cool so cool but again even even beyond the grave cemetery site there's that cool page with a link that can be emailed out it can be shared i'm about to go to a family reunion later today in this family reunion we'll have a bunch of people there this is on the crawford side of our family which is my granddad's side so very appropriate that we've got this really cool thing speaking of that uh <laughs> this randomly happens so also on this my heritage thing they created this crazy i don't know how i feel about it yet <laughs> i don't know how i feel about it yet if i find this video i'll have to show it to you i showed it to my cousins and i was like wow 
they created all on their own this video using AI, artificial intelligence, and they pulled together the story from my granddad's page that I already had on there, and they made it into this talking video. So they took a picture of my granddad and then animated his mouth and read the words that were in there from his bio, and but he was the one speaking it as if it were a story, saying, I grew up in this city and then I blah, blah, blah. I saw that and I was like, holy heck. <laughs> it's kind of weird, it's kind of cool. I don't know how I feel about it. Obviously it's nowhere near his voice, but it was just interesting that that technology exists now to do that. Interesting. But again, you know, so those are just some cool things that you can do from a digital age perspective. You've got sites like MyHeritage where you can do your whole family tree. Then you've got a really cool, what I think they should connect up. You have a cool app like Forevery where you can build a very robust page about your loved one online and then share that around with family at something like a family reunion, at something like where you're with your niece and nephews like I have and you wanna just share that story of a loved one and say, how cool is this? Like help them be proud of their grand they are a great granddad you know it's their great granddad was my granddad it's cooler when it's all in context you know you've got actual photos to look at and you're not just hearing a story or reading about a story it now becomes more real when it's put into context and you tell them this is your great granddad your mother's grandfather your grandfather's dad who raised granddad to be so cool and that's why your mom's so cool and that's why you're now so cool you know? <laughs> but for them to hear what he did and how he lived and the accomplishments he made in his time right with the challenges of civil rights and everything else that he had to deal with in his day and we're still dealing with remnants of today there's neither here nor there at this moment but to hear that and know that he had a whole gym named after him and all these people regarded him with such reverence and thought of him as a father figure speaks so much to the caliber of man that he was the fact that he was in his, a trustee in his church and was so very involved in his church saying in the choir that my grandma played piano and, you know it just adds so much color to the life of who this man was beyond the pictures and beyond the bio it just helps it come all together in a real way and that i feel is such a great way to pass along that family history in a digital age that it, it just makes it become more real and at the end of the day it gives some pride it gives some pride to our um, to our next generation of where they came from. Now you kind of know. Now you've got some knowledge. And the more that we can add on to this, the more we can learn about great uncles and great aunts and cousins and people who did amazing things. I just heard Blair Underwood is somehow connected in our family. How? I'm still trying to figure out. <laughs> but he's in there and, you know, we've got all kinds of wonderful people who did amazing things. Another client project I had a while back was with the International Trade Association and we were learning all about foreign service officers and foreign trade officers who live in other countries for years at a time helping American businesses thrive in those countries and figure out the rules and all of this kind of thing and make connections and the relationships needed for a business to thrive. And we had some cousin in the line that I picked up somewhere and learned about and saw a picture of and dug into him and tried to figure out who he was. He was a foreign service officer way back then. And he talked about in his, in his obituary about how amazing it was to live in all these different countries. How cool is that? How cool is that? Like, you know, nearly, nearly a century ago, probably three quarters of a century ago. Awesome, amazing. And these are the kinds of people who live in your family, who were a part of your family. So that's a tool I definitely want you to check out. Forevery, check them out. What I can tell you is the page itself is very easy to, um, to figure out and pull together. It's just really plug and play. You pop in a photo of your loved one, you pop in a header, and then you pop in their story, and then you've got a link that you can share, and then you just put in your information, they send you that sticker, 
and you can stick it on the grave site next time you're around that way. If you're not near the grave site, you can ship it to a loved one who can go stick it on the grave site for you. So forever check them out. I think they're awesome. I think it's a great way to bring about an awareness, a knowledge of your family history in a digital age. So next level people, that's next level. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for listening. Again, I'm Andrew with the ADS Agency. It's always here to bring you the very best in marketing branding tips, as well as business tips for those of you who are entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, and personal branders, which we all are personal branders at the end of the day. You can follow us at the ADS Agency. That's T-H-E-A-D-S, like ads, like advertising agency. And by the way, I'm going to give some plugs to for every below. For those of you who are watching this on YouTube, it'll be in the description. If you're listening to it on podcast, it'll be in the show notes. So you can check that out. And otherwise, I hope you truly enjoyed this episode. I thought it was an interesting, an interesting twist on what we do. Again, for those of you who are interested in that memorial video and how to do that, I'm going to link to that as well. But take some time to honor your loved ones. Take some time. I think it's well worth it. I think you'll enjoy it. And the time you invest in caring about and sharing these stories is time well spent. It's going to pay dividends for your future generations. All right, my dears, catch you next time. Cheers.